Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com and this is an uh, introduction to networking. And today I want to talk about the history of the local area network known as LAN. And uh, I've been in uh, telecom for a long time, since the 70s, long before there was local area networks and long before there was Ethernet, long before they used twisted pair to communicate to computers. And, and I've seen the migration over the 80s and the 90s and and all the way up till now, uh, 2015. Uh, and it's been an exciting time because IT is an exciting industry. And if you're in it you'll, and you enjoy it, time will go very fast. But I have a perspective uh, because of all these years being in uh, telecom and, and data and IT um, that uh, maybe would help you understand uh, why we're here. As people often say about history, if you know where you came from, you can better understand why you're here today. So, uh, you know, what I want to start with is back in the 80s when I worked for a big corporation, uh, we started doing uh, networking over uh, uh, coax. And at that point, it was thick coax. And we had a mainframe. And, and all the computers attached to the mainframe um, were dumb computers. Actually, they weren't even computers. They were just uh, CRT screens with uh, keypads. And I really didn't know much about those uh, applications at that time. I just knew that people were cabling. And I wasn't actually involved in cabling for that company at that time. But as things changed, uh, we started getting into Apple Talk. And a lot of people are saying, what in the world is Apple Talk? Well, it's kind of strange, but that was really a pretty good network. It was run over Twisted Pair, and it was run over uh, telephone cable. Uh, and in fact, you could use the same connection for your telephone as you use for your computer. So the two center uh, uh, cables in RJ11 uh, plug uh, that y you'd normally see on the wall back then, that would be used for your telephone. And then the, the, the second pair that fit right on top of it looked like this fit right on top. So the center pair is for telephone. The next pair was for Apple Talk. And I could connect all the Apple Talk devices in a, uh, uh, in a room. And I guess it would go to 10 computers and, and uh, you could communicate back and forth. But before Apple Talk, there was also something called sneaker net. And I know that sounds kind of strange, but for those who don't know what a sneaker is, a sneaker is a tennis shoe. And uh, what you would do is you would take your floppy, and it was actually a floppy, it actually bent. And it was about that big, you know? And, uh, or you would take your diskette, and for those who don't know what a diskette is, you're really young. Um, it, it, diskette's a, a piece of plastic about that big. It has a floppy inside that's protected by plastic. Uh, but anyway, you would take that, you'd copy your file that you needed, then what you would do is you would run over to, uh, uh, to your friend's computer, and you would hand them... Uh, that, that floppy disk or that diskette and they would put it in their computer and they would download uh, the file that, that you just gave them. And that's how you would do file sharing back then. And then of course things progressed. And I remember the first time I ran into what is now called 10 base T. And it was uh, back then, the first time I did it, I did it over telephone cable and we connected all these computers together and we ran it to a room and it was punched down to a 66 block and uh, which is used for telephone and then the 66 block would take it with a an amp cable into this little device called a david hub and that was the very first time i put in a 10 base t network and um, i think that was before 10 base t was even a standard back then uh, talk about standards let's digress a little bit here uh, standards for ethernet which is the technology that's used in local area networks uh, to communicate with computers um, is, uh, uh, is set by uh, uh, an organization called IEEE, and that stands for Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. And they set the standards, how the signaling will take place on Ethernet and uh, things like that. Now, now, the pinout is handled by another organization, not IEEE, but IEEE handles all the protocol in Ethernet and how Ethernet would do certain things. But uh, Back then also we did coax cables, uh, a thin, thin net it was called, and uh, that was actually before 10 base T, but it was a thin net. And let me show you what it, what it looked like. Um, what you would do is, if you had uh, different uh, uh, computers in a room, and I'm just gonna show it logically how that would look. And these are your computers or PCs. 
PC. And maybe you had a server here and a, and a PC. And what you would do is you would run your cable, you would start here, and then it would go back, and then it would go here, and then it would go here, and then it would go here, and then it would end here. And these endings had to have termination uh, resistors. And uh, uh, th what would happen here is all these computers would listen to see if anyone's transmitting. And uh, if no one was transmitting, then they would transmit. And that was called CSMA slash CD. And that stands for Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Detection. And what would happen was they would just sit there, Carrier Sense, they would make sure no one else was talking on that coax cable. And if no one was talking, then they would transmit. Try to think of this like um, walkie-talkies. You know, if you got a bunch of people on walkie-talkies and they're, they're listening and they're listening and they're listening to see if anyone else is talking, and then they, you know, key that walkie-talkie and they, they say what they need to say, or on that two-way radio, uh, they, they, they say what they need to say, and then they release and they see if someone else was also talking at the same time. And if not, then everyone got that transmission. Even if it wasn't meant for everyone, everyone got that transmission. And the same thing here. If, if, if this PC here uh, wanted to talk to this PC here, every single person on that line, and sometimes this line could be pretty long, a lot of PCs, would hear this person sending that message. And uh, what they would do is they would ignore the message, of course, because it was not addressed to them using their uh, burned-in address or MAC address. That's a, an address that's on the uh, network interface card, the NIC card. NIC card has a burned-in 48-bit uh, uh, address on there. It's not your IP address. It's different than the IP address. This is your network ad or your uh, hardware address. And if that wasn't meant for them, then they would ignore what was said. However, if one computer started transmitting and another computer started at the exact same time, it would be like two people talking at the same time on two separate radios. And what would happen is no one would understand anything. It would just be garbage. So what would happen, as soon as that would happen, all the computers would hear that and they would set out what's called a jam message. And all the other computers would know that there was a collision. That's where you get the collision detection of CSMA slash CD. Uh, carrier sense, multiple access, multiple access, carrier sense, collision detection. And then everyone would back off for a while uh, on that collision detection and they would just wait uh, a, a, a determined time. Each computer had a different time set within their uh, protocol and then they would start sending again. So this could really slow down the network because everyone had to wait till someone else was done talking before they could send a packet. Uh, whereas, and if there was a collision, everybody had to shut up for a certain time period uh, before they started retransmitting. And it was kind of interesting because each of these computers, what they would have on the back is they would have a little T that looked like this. And uh, the, the cable, like this cable here, would come in here, and then this part would go over here, and then this would attach to the PC. And uh, it was kind of a tedious job to cable these buildings. Uh, what you would have to do is you'd, uh, you'd get a big roll of cable, it's usually in a roll, and you would pull uh, out to the very end uh, where you were uh, talking to. And let's say if your roll was here, and you were pulling your cable, you'd pull all the way to the end. Then if you wanted to, to cable this computer, you would just pull it down. You'd pull down your cable and out the wall maybe six to eight foot. And then you would go to the next place, you'd pull the cable. This would stay stationary, this would turn and provide. Keep on adding. Now the problem would be <laughs> when someone said, you're all done cabling, and they said, oh, I need another computer right here. And then you would have to you're all done cable and you'd have to cut this cable and you'd have to splice in two others and bring it down here and then go up there and that's how you would do it. It, it, was, it was the best you could do back then before 10 base T. But once 10 base T came in, everything changed because now you're using a hub. That's old technology, by the way. Let me erase this and let's look at the hub. Uh, using a hub, you're using different type of 
technology, you're using unshielded twisted pair, UTP, unshielded twisted pair. Looks like telephone cable, but uh, when it came to 10 base T, um, uh, 10 megabits over baseband twisted pair, that's what that stands for. And remember, when you're talking in telecom words, you're always going to be talking in bits, not bytes. When you're talking about computers, computer memory, things like that, it's in bytes, not bits. And there is a difference there. Remember, it's eight bits to a byte. And so, um, you know, there is a difference there in math. Don't confuse the two. And always remember to, uh, to use bits when you're talking about telecom compared to bytes when you're talking about what's inside of a computer. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about 10 base T. And the nice thing about 10 base T and using a hub was that your computers out here are no longer daisy chained together. Remember the old way I just was talking about their daisy chain. But in this case, um, they go to a hub, and that hub is more of a star configuration. And uh, what would happen is the same thing would happen. It'd still use CSMA slash CD. Remember, carrier sense, multiple access with collision detection. Uh, so when this computer would send something to this PC, uh, the hub would take that message that would come in, and it would send it to all the other computers on the line and then the only computer that would actually respond to that message is the computer that recognized its MAC address then it would respond to that message and this was a great system it worked great for years but you're still running into the same problem like you do with the radio so you know you still have to listen to make sure no one else is on the line sending packets and if they are and you're sending it at the same time then you have a problem uh, of course there's some other issues sometimes uh, the NIC cards would go crazy and they would uh, just start sending packets and packets and packets and not following the protocol uh, things and it would bring your whole network down. Uh, that was rare, but it did happen. Uh, so that, that's uh, where we're at with the hub. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim from CableSupply.com. Hi, this is Jim with CableSupply.com and today I'm going to show you how to cut a hole in the drywall. This is David, signing out. You stay classy, Internet.